Welcome back to Time Bandit on Two Wheels. We left you in Prince Albert, and from there we wheeled around to the waterfall at Mearing's Port, then through the ostrich farms in the wilderness, back to Owen's Horn. We went down to George, but owing to a forecast of heavy rain and heavy tourists, we left the wilderness, and backtracked over the pass, and then we just shot our own along the tourist route all the way to Utenhag via Jeffreys Bay. So let's jump right in. And this is Zor, the first South African Missionary Society's project from 1817. And there's a toast to Paddy in Avalon, an MGB GT parked in the garage. And this is the Myringsport Pass, another Thomas Bain extravaganza cutting his way through the mountains or at least watching while the other guys did the work. It was a Sunday so there were a few locals out for a quick thrash on the pass. But at Miring Sport you're going to do a quick silly walk up to the waterfall. Up there. I look back to the mountains our first Santa Claus they don't take it very seriously here Santa Claus and Christmas and all that stuff it's quite a pretty waterfall and given a kayak I could run that and just round the corner was a pleasant little lay-by where we stopped with one or two hundred other bikers Port and De Rust, we took the back roads, found some ostrich farms, about 10 million of them and not one with its head in the sand. This is Herald, as in Hark the Herald Angels Sing, given it's Christmas, so we thought we'd stop taking the view, the misty pass that we're about to go over, take the view, have a coffee and smell the roses. You could almost be in the Alps. It's got that feel about it. And it's the old post office. And look. Ostrich eggs. <laughs> That's going to be some omelette. There's churches like these in every village. <coughs> Desmond Tutu said that when the colonizers arrived, they had the Bible and we had the land. And when they left, we had the Bible and they had the land. Now this motorcycle travel is really only for the roughy tufty types of people. Not your ordinary guy can do this because if you eat this four times a day you're in trouble. And just before we left this bird with a big pointy nose turned up. I'm told by Sally it's a honey eater. Rain stopped play at the Montague Pass uh, because it was washed away. So we headed up into the hills following the Utaniqua Pass. And then who'd have thought in Africa it rains? Outrageous, and we're above the 
cloud line. <laughs> the original plan was to take the pass through the mountains there, but I think it got washed away in the rains last week, so we abandoned that, came down the main road. And as we whizzed through this lot, I said to Anne, I never imagined coming to South Africa and riding through the Alps. And then you find this. Built by Italian prisoners of war during World War II. Thanks, guys. Beats fighting a war. And it is called wilderness, appropriately enough. And we managed to find a dodgy hotel in the back streets when you've got all this fabulous beachfront B&B property. Another great planning mistake. There is Peter Nuts. If this motorcycling gets any harder, we're going to have to go back to the boat. Look guilty. I've waited all week for this. <coughs> When we sailed down this coastline, we commented on how the villagers even had electricity because you could see the lights all lit up on the hillside. I think we were being naive. We were actually millionaires' homes up on the high ground. Now, when you think of Africa, what do you think of? Lions, tigers, hippos, heffalumps, all kinds of things. And we've been quite surprised to find that it's got some amazing mountainous scenery. Flatlands, Serengeti. But here we got mountains, stunning. Small coffee shop in amongst the mountains and if you're really desperate you can go for Dove Puff and here you have a roaster coke which I guess is cheese and toast here we go filling up the tank aside the reason for coming to Uniondale is so you can leave it through the Uniondale Pass. Clint Eastwood could be walking around here somewhere. I've speeded up this clip so as not to bore you because for some reason this bike doesn't go as fast as the one I used to ride 20 years ago. And after riding through the fruit farms, we made it to the Asagai Bosch Country Lodge. Continuing the hell that is motorcycle travel, I'm going to have to go and have a swim. <laughs> so, we have another £40 a night bed and breakfast for two, £40, in this country lodge that we managed to find. Look at the scenery. Clothes are drying because last night's b, b was damp and miserable and tonight's is absolutely fabulous. An evening stroll through the gardens where we've got a couple of horses and a little flock of springbok. The springbok with an itchy ear. Come to see us. Oh. Hello. Why the long face? <laughs> <laughs> this is the wedding chapel in the Asagai Bosch Country Lodge. <laughs> the only guest. Are you the bride or the groom? <laughs> I am the bride. You are the bride. You were the bride, my sweet. 
I should maybe have paid more attention in geography, but I never imagined bits of South Africa would look like this. So, crack of dawn, we upped and offed the Asagai. Lovely breakfast. And here we are at Jeffrey's Bay with the um, incredibly posh houses built on the seafront, the staff cleaning the rugs, and the beach, the surf waves. For a taste of the seaside, we headed inland to farming country. Come on, guys, move along. We tried to stick to the back roads as the lunatics on the N2 flew past up above. And like this backing track, these townships can go on and on and on. out into another world. It's not a social commentary, just letting you see what we saw. Now this is the same town. Shacks at one end and preparatory schools at the other. We left Jutenhag behind and then headed out into the very flat route out to Statlerville. This was the flat Africa I'd expected to see. But not a wildebeest in sight. The tar road soon gave way to a concrete road. Soon gave way to a gravel road for about another 500 miles. This was something about Major Tom to ground control. Now, some of the folks who met up at Panama might remember Bill and Jean and out of the bag. Well, Jean said we were to look out for the carpets of purple flowers. So there you go, Jean. Now, all along this road, we've been following a railway line, and this is a railway station. And the railway was built to transport ostrich feathers to Europe so the ladies could get dolled up what a fantastic use of resources. This whole place is dry as a stick, so it's hard to imagine just how the rain was falling to cause this amount of erosion. Lunch stop, middle of nowhere. Absolute middle of and about now you try not to think about not having a puncture repair kit with you. 
So that's plenty. Goodbye from her and goodbye from him. Thanks for suffering through this. If you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up and come back for episode three.